Hello, what's going on everybody? This is Jay from Maji and Jay. Today the purpose of this video is to review the new Uphone B Touch that I got from the website pandaworld.com about almost three weeks ago. This model, if I'm not mistaken, goes for $159 and it is an absolute beast in performance. I was overall impressed on how well this phone does for the price. Now before we get into the review, let's go ahead and jump into the physical aspects of the phone. And the first thing you're going to find on the front is a 5.5 inch. It is a 5 point multi touch screen. And it has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels and also comes with a 2.5D art screen. Which means that by the edges it's going to bend a little bit making the phone look very nice and elegant. Then looking towards the top, you're going to find a 5 megapixel sensor camera. We also got the LED flash, which I think is an absolute waste. That thing is not even bright enough for night time. We got the ear speaker and also the proximity and light sensor. On the bottom, we're going to find the menu key. We got the home key, which is also a fingerprint scanner, and it is very comfortable and very sensitive as well. We're going to be testing that in just a moment. And finally, we got the back key, but we can see that the menu key and the back key don't light up. That was a little bit of a downer, but at least they glow at night time. Looking towards the left side of the phone, we find here a metallic frame. We also got the volume rockers up and down together with the power button located on the same side. Something that I don't prefer, but at least it does the job. On the top, we got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the charging slash data port, and this one also supports ODG. On the right side, we see we don't have anything here. It's going to be absolutely plain. We only have a metallic frame. And then finally, on the bottom, we got the loudspeaker together with the main microphone, which is very sensitive. And you guys are going to listen to that when I do the video test in just a moment. Looking towards the back, we find a 13 megapixel IMX 214 Sony sensor, which is great. We also got here the dual LED flash. We have the Elfone logo and on the bottom is plain this time. Opening the back cover on this phone can be a little bit of a challenge. So you guys have to be extremely careful because it is still made of plastic and you can crack it easily. The great news is that this plastic is a little bit flexible, so I didn't run any risk so far. And I do like the material on the back. It's a little bit rough and it makes you feel like your phone is not going to fall off even if your hands are sweating, which is definitely a plus. Now here we're going to find the battery. This is a 2550 power million battery and I was able to get two days with this one. The first day was a lot of usage. I was doing the GPS, the Wi-Fi, 3G and so on with this battery here and it did last it very very well. As a matter of fact, I think I ended the day with about 55% and then the next day I was mostly on standby but I did play some games and so on. So that was great and have in mind guys that this phone also supports fast charging which is working very well. I mean it's not going to be as fast as the Samsung Galaxy S6 but at least you can get I would say from 0% to 45% in about 45 to 50 minutes which I think is great. Now looking towards the inside of the phone, we're going to find that this is a dual send, dual standby device and also supports TF cards up to 128, even though they're specifying that it is only 64 gigabytes. I'm pretty sure that you guys can put it in and the system will read it as well. We find the F1 logo, we find the model, the B touch, and then we got the 2 MEI information and we can see how well this phone is built. On the top, we're going to find the Wi-Fi and 3G antenna. Um, and then we also got the Bluetooth antenna as well. And this phone does support 4G LTE, but unfortunately the bands are not supported here in the USA. So with that being said, let's go ahead and install the battery and see what kind of blue logo we got here. And now let me go ahead and press the power button. And the first thing we're going to see here is that UFone logo. And something that I would like to mention is that it does have pressure points. So sometimes when you press too hard on the screen, you're going to see that the colors do get a little bit distorted. Make sure you guys are careful because that can damage your LCD easily. Uh, that could be an indication that maybe the glass is too close to the LCD screen or that the glass itself is a little bit flexible. So that was a little bit of uh, quality control, I will say, that I noticed on this device. But other than that, the display is very nice and crisp. Now here we can see the lock screen. On the last screen, the first thing that it's giving us here is the time. You also got the date. On the bottom says input fingerprint. Now a little bug I also noticed on the last screen is that even though you're moving it and touching it around, it does still go into sleep mode. It's not supposed to do that if you're touching the screen. As you guys can notice, I am touching it and it went to sleep anyways. On the top, you can't access the quick toggles after inputting your fingerprint. That's because of security purposes or something like that. I'm not sure that could be also another bug that we have on here. But when we don't have that security um, input into the lock screen, it's going to allow us to access all the toggles on the top. And now here when inputting my fingerprint, you guys are going to notice how sensitive it is. It is very, very fast and it doesn't have any failures if you guys are, um, are inputting it correctly. As a matter of fact, you guys can notice that I have a little bit of a cut there on my finger and it is still working perfectly well. I'm not having any misprints at all or misreadings just to call it that way. Let me go ahead and test my left thumb and you guys are going to notice that yes it is quite sensitive. We don't have any failures whatsoever and don't take me wrong sometimes if you don't press it on the right angle it does misread it so 
it doesn't do it often but there we can see guys that for the most part it's working perfectly well now here we have a clean version or a clean UI of the Android Lollipop 5.0 and yes it is real so here we have all the notifications if you continue to scroll down we're going to see all the toggles we can of course increase and decrease the brightness and now that was something that I noticed about this phone that outside the brightness was not very very bright but it is not the worst either as you guys can notice right there and then we can also see here we got the Wi-Fi toggle, we got the Bluetooth toggle, we had the airplane mode and all those great toggles that we normally like to use and that's definitely great. When we go here into settings we're going to notice that we don't have any special features on this device. It doesn't have hot knot and also doesn't have NFC. Uh, the only great thing that we do have is the fingerprint scanner which I showed you already. It's working perfectly well. Uh, we also have off screen gestures in which we can double tap on the screen to wake it up. I'll be showing you that in just a moment. So here we can see that yes that is working as intended. Now if you double tap it again it's not going to put it asleep unfortunately. Let me go ahead and see what other ones we have. We have swipe down, we had to launch the camera, in which uh, I think all we have to do is uh, we can just type the letter C. I'm not sure if that's correct. And yes, that is the letter C. So let me go ahead and put it on sleep mode. And of course, it's going to ask me for my fingerprint, but afterwards, it's going to take me directly into the camera. So here, let me go ahead and set up my fingerprint. And there we have it guys, the camera also on this device, which we're going to be talking about in just a moment here, is a very nice quality. Now here let's go ahead and jump into settings again, let's go into about device, then here we're going to find the Android Lollipop, and this system is very very good, it's working very smoothly, have in mind that we do have 3GB of RAM, it comes with 16GB of internal storage, and also has the MTK6752 Octa Core. Now let's go back here once, let's go ahead and confirm on apps the RAM available that we have on this device. Here we have it. Let's go into running and this hasn't been faked whatsoever and you guys can tell right there that I have about almost two gigabytes of RAM available which is great and I do have a lot of applications already installed on the system. Let's go ahead and check here on storage. We're going to find the available storage. It's almost 13 gigabytes which is great and this is sufficient for me because I don't have a lot of pictures on here and I don't have a lot of videos either so that's definitely a plus but you can always upgrade it with a TF card up to 128 gigabytes. So there we have it for the settings and now here we're going to take a look at the cameras on the front like I said earlier we have a 5 megapixel sensor camera. On the back we have a 30 megapixel Sony sensor so it is great and now let's go ahead and jump to the park and test it out. Hey what's going on everybody this is Jay and now we're testing the Ulephone B Touch 30 megapixel sensor. This is the uh, rear facing camera and we can tell guys that this is one of my favorite sensors and that's because the quality is super nice, the colors, the saturation, everything is perfect. I would say in my opinion according to the price that we're getting this phone for it's not that bad. Now the only thing I noticed is that the autofocus is not the best out there. You guys had to tap on the screen in order to get it a little better so you guys notice I just tapped on it and the same thing goes if you're moving to a different object like the grass here you do have to tap it again to get that perfect focus otherwise it's going to be a little bit blurry other than that I think the sensor is great and of course I have provided some picture samples below so that way you guys can check them out and now let's test the front facing camera and now finally we are testing the front facing camera of the Uphone B Touch and we can notice guys that for some reason I can never record in full screen. It's always a little bit cut off on the sides. Uh, so that's something that I can never change and also the LED flash on this phone is an absolute joke even though I am recording during the daytime. At night time the quality wasn't that great either. So again the LED flash is not even I would say significant in this case. Other than that the selfies are going to do a lot better than the actual recording. Uh, also we can notice that the focus is not working as intended. So it's going to be very blurry. The colors are a little bit too dark but this is always very common on Chinese phones. And now with the camera tested here we're going to open the camera itself and we're going to see all the options that we have available. It's very similar to the Echo Aurora E04. Uh, we can see here that we can change into different uh, type of uh, picture modes. We got blackboard, we got negative, uh, we have whiteboard and so on. And we do have about I think it's uh, let me see here we have nine it's about 18 in total. 
so that's definitely great and it is a very cool feature to have as well on the top you find panorama mode we got beauty mode and so on so this is working as intended as well and here we can see other toggles that we have supported for the HDMI we also got the one for the flash and also to flip the camera around now here on settings I want to show you that this camera remains at 30 megapixels even at full screen as I have it right now so you guys can see the preview size is a full screen and I can go still up to 30 megapixels which is the max now flipping the camera around we're going to see the 5 megapixel sensor which is great as well but the recording quality is not great as you guys saw from that video clip let's go ahead and confirm here the uh, pixels I also have it at full screen and we can see that in fact it's going to be an 8 megapixel sensor I do apologize for that it is not a 5 megapixel sensor as I mentioned earlier and yes we can see that right now we have it at its max so that's definitely a plus now let me go ahead and flip this around and let's get back here to the system and now getting back to the operating system another great feature that is working well on this device is going to be the GPS on the road it was locking a signal very fast I didn't have any crashes whatsoever with the maps application and so on so I was very impressed to see that and even here from inside of the house I'm going to open the application you guys are going to notice that right now it's reading 19 satellites and that is quite impressive considering that we are inside and the outside is a little bit cloudy right now it's attempting to lock a signal and it did lock it within I would say 15 10 15 seconds at the most and the accuracy starts improving after time it needs about a minute or so so here we can see guys that yes the GPS is working as intended and again we don't need to root it or customize it to get it this way and now with that being said about the GPS here we're going to take a look around the system of course I'll be playing with some applications and games that I have already downloaded into the system so that way you guys can see how well it's working and also check out the gaming uh, before we do so let's go ahead and open YouTube so that way you guys can see that yes everything's working as intended and the latest one was about the M Star S700 let's go ahead and open it and here we're going to see how fast it's going to be this is only using the 3G connectivity We can play it up to 720p. And now after completing that video test, we can hear that the bottom speaker is super, super great. I mean, it's not going to be equivalent to the Samsung Galaxy S6, but I would say that it is quite competitive to other Chinese devices. And now here, guys, let's go ahead and resume to playing some applications and games. Make sure you guys enjoy it.
well guys there we saw the performance of this device and we can come to a conclusion that this phone is an absolute beast i remember when a few months ago 159 dollars only got you a cheap chinese replica and nowadays you guys get a device that comes with three gigabytes of ram 16 gigabytes of internal storage and also the octa core processor with a very nice design and also made of aluminum so i mean things are getting better and not to mention that this phone also supports 4g lte in certain countries so this is very serious guys this device right here i think it's one of the best so far of 2015 um, and also others as well like the echo aurora e04 and many others with the mtk 6752 but this one i do like the design very very much it does uh, gives us the impression that we're using an iphone but it's not we can see that we had the menu key in the back key indicating that yes this is an android device now with that being said here the next thing we're going to complete is a weight test i have my little weight scale let me go ahead and place it on top and this device is 169 grams so it is more towards the heavy side and a lot of that has to do with the battery and the metal frame itself and yes it does support otg so if you guys have one of these adapters you can easily connect it on the top and then you connect accessories such as keyboards mice and gaming controllers which is definitely great now even though this phone only comes with a 720p display i have to say that the pixels are barely noticeable you guys can see here from the camera we can barely see any pixels whatsoever so it is uh, very similar to a 1080p even though it is not i would say that sometimes a 720p can give you a lot of advantages including uh, better performance on the cpu and also better lasting battery so yes a 720p display at least on this model is doing very well the only thing i didn't like is that the bezels are not matching with the lcd so we do have some black bezels on the bottom i don't know if you guys can see that right there that don't align with the lcd and that looks a little bit ugly but on the black color version you guys can barely see it so it makes it look very nice and elegant and uh, the next thing guys we're going to complete here is a browser test of course i have connected here to the wi-fi and as you guys can notice the wi-fi is very very good as usual so let me go ahead and turn this off and now we're going to be testing the 3g connectivity on this device and it is reading it as 3g only and not h plus but you guys are going to see that it is very very fast and of course i'm using cricket here in the usa let me go ahead and search let's say here for ebay.com and these are websites like i like to say that require a lot of power on your data and there we saw ebay let's go ahead and open here let's say panda will which is the provider of this device the one that sent it to me and panda will guys i really can't stress it enough they're very responsible at least every order that i submit with them gets here very fast so there we saw panda will let's go ahead and try another one let's say um Coolie Cool, which is also a decent website, even though some of the reviews are saying the opposite of what I'm telling you guys. That's very weird, but uh, yes, Coolie Cool has never failed me either. These are great providers, and also DHGate is very good as well. So the great news is that Coolie Cool and Panda World, they do accept PayPal and many other websites. The only one that don't accept PayPal is DHGate. It's like a Chinese eBay. So there we saw Coolie Cool guys, and again, it's very fast. The browser is very snappy, so I was very glad to see that as well. And now, with that being said, the next thing we're going to complete here is a Bluetooth test. Here I have my little tap pole, and that's because I decided to upgrade my uh, Bose speaker. I'm going to be getting a different one very soon. So let me go ahead and for now turn this on and place it on parry mode. And the tap pole is a very, very good speaker, guys. There we can see that, yes, it is in parry mode. Let's go here into settings. Let's go into Bluetooth and let's go ahead and start the pairing procedure and like any other uh, device out there it takes between 15 to 30 seconds before reading the device and you guys can also notice that i have connected to my beats pill xl and now we can confirm that the tap pole has finally connected so let's go here back once let's go into settings and audio profiles as we usually do i think that this time is going to be on sound and notifications let's go into general let's go into phone ringtone and let's check it out there is a little bit of a delay Okay, and now we are testing the loudspeaker on the phone itself. Like I said earlier guys, the quality is very decent. 
And the great news is that if you place it on the table, it's not going to block the sound at all. Which is something that I was looking forward to. And now with the Bluetooth and sound test completed, here we're going to go ahead and dial 611. That way we can check the call quality and see how fast it's dialing. I didn't have any issues at all outside on the outdoors and also with the wind and driving and so on, the traffic noise. I didn't have any issues with the ear speaker at all, guys. It was very nice and a very good quality. So of course, let's go ahead and test it out so that way you guys can see it for yourselves. And now let's place it on loudspeaker. This is the loudspeaker. Just FYI, your current plan is basic, which expires June 23rd. Now let's test the ear speaker quality. Very, very loud. Here we got the proximity sensor test. Super sensitive. Well guys, there we have it for the review today and I have to give you my conclusion on this phone. I think that it is definitely worth the $159. I believe that it is not overpriced and also is not underpriced and especially if you guys are getting a coupon then this is a great deal for this device. And we can see that yes, overall it does have great build quality and the only thing that this one has to, I would say MV from the L Phone P7000 is that it doesn't have a full HD display. But sometimes it's not needed because it can deplete your battery quite fast and then second it doesn't have have NSC nor hot knot but now considering how well this phone is performing with the 13 megapixel sensor the 5 megapixel or actually the 8 megapixel sensor camera on the front and all the great features that we're getting with it already with the Android Lollipop 5.0 I think it's definitely worth it so yes if you guys do have any questions like always please don't forget to comment down below like the video subscribe for more thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on my next one